Hi, you guys. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. You never know when something is going to appear or disappear. So very important to be subscribed. So I just wanted to say it has been so much content creation right now. I'm exhausted. If I've been a bit quiet, it's because, oh my gosh, it's been so time consuming. A lot of the content has been, has required a lot of research lately. So, oh my goodness. But anyway, I should be back on Insta on Saturday. So if you've been missing me on there, I've just been producing content for you guys. <laughs> Um, okay, so this video was prompted by Heather McDonald's interview with Holly Madison and Bridget Marquat. God, it's hard to say her name now. <laughs> anyway, they're from the girls next door. They're great. And um, they just launched a new podcast. Uh, they're doing recaps. You should go check out. I, I know Holly Madison's promoting it on her channel on YouTube. Um, but needless to say, I was listening to the uh, episode and Heather McDonald is talking about her going to the Playboy Mansion, which her and I have discussed before, and um, sort of how Holly and Bridget got kind of recruited into um, the Playboy party, you know, slash girlfriend role. And... I realized that I've shared my story on the Patreon about my encounter with Hugh Hefner, but I hadn't really shared it out here. And since it's been in the Patreon for some time now, I'm going to tell you guys. So, and the patrons are the patrons are approving this message and supporting this on um, YouTube. So, I'm just saying, say thanks when you see them. Um, if you meet some out there in the social media space or on YouTube. Um, okay, they're called the Diamonds. Yeah, I know, real original, but that's what we came up with as a group. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. All right, so this was in my early 20s. I find out about this party at this club that was in Hollywood. It was like a big deal for a while. And it was like the late, maybe I want to say like 97 or something. I don't know, 1997. Anyway, I ended up going to this Playboy party at this nightclub. Now, these were not the official Playboy parties. These were promotional parties that Hugh Hefner would have for the brand outside of the mansion because at this time they were doing a lot of promotion around the brand. And so, and I don't know, they might have used it to scout girls as well, you know, for um, whatever Hugh was scouting girls for at the time. So, I basically went to this party and I, uh, it was a pajama party, even though it wasn't an official Playboy party. And so I was wearing like a sexy, like nightgown thing or whatever. Anyway, I mean, every, I mean, everybody was. And I, at this time was super skinny. I was like, maybe, oh God, you guys, I was like a hundred and I want to say 17 or 18 pounds. Like I was so tiny. I was I'm five, three and a half, so that gives you an idea. Um, I was a size zero. I had brown hair, really long, and it's so different looking. Anyway, so what happened was um, I was walking around the party and this bouncer guy sees me and he says, I was like all in a little white outfit, and he said to me, "You would you like to come sit with Hugh Hefner? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Totally. Yes, I would. <laughs> so okay. I sit down next to Hugh Hefner and he's kind of quiet, but we, I'm trying to make small talk cause I'm like bubbly and I'm just like, Hey, you know, <laughs> here I am. This is fun. And there's all these girls around him already. And it was really strange. Anyway, we made like small talk. I forget what I even said. I, I think he said like, where are you from? And I was like, I'm, um, I don't know, I forget even what I said to him, but we were just, you know, shooting the shit. So what ends up happening is that I, um, I end up, I guess, making him pretty happy because he suddenly like looks at me really close and then I'm like looking at him really close and he comes in and he kisses me and he like tongues me and I'm like, whoa, hey, I was just like in shock. Yeah. So I sort of accidentally kissed Hugh Hefner and he was not attractive for me or he was old still, even at this time for me, cause I'm way young and he was very old compared to me. 
So, and I was not, I'm not one of these women who's into father figure type things. I'm definitely into like superior intellect people, but not father figures. That's not my thing. So I was like, um, anyway, I pulled back, but I just kind of like sat there and he goes, would you, uh, I'd like you to come to my parties at my house. And I was like, okay. So I end up, um, I, you know, I wipe my mouth. <laughs> no, I did that really. I was like in the corner, like, oh my God. And, um, anyway, so no, a lot of older women found him very attractive, but you know, he never dated older women. Okay. So, I mean, I hate to drag you, but I have to. So what happened was, um, he put me in touch with his secretary or assistant. I feel like her name was like Christy or Chrissy or I don't know. I can't, I'm doing that from memory. And so, um, he was like, get a hold of her and she'll set you up in the system for the parties. And I was like, okay. So I, um, was like reached out to her and then they gave me, um, I had to send in my photos and they, you know, you had to be single. There's like all these rules. So I send in my photos and I wait. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait, and I wait. (laughs) So I got my call, I made it on the list, and they took my information, and then I started getting these beautiful invitations in the mail. And I was lucky, I made it on the level of list for midsummer. There were different lists, like different invite lists for Hugh. One level was, you know, he had these like New Year's Eve parties that were sort of the lightest list. It was the easiest list to get on. Then the midsummer and Halloween ones were the most hard to get into that list. Um, And then he had a very intimate list, which I wasn't a part of. I was only on the midsummer list. Um, And the intimate list was him and his friends, movie night, and they do like pool parties and stuff like that. I didn't go to those, but um, I did go to the midsummer and the Halloween and New Year's and all those, and those were so fun. He also had this really wild concept of drive up privileges, and drive up privileges were the most exclusive. And then you could take your car up to the mansion, park it, or valet it, and go to the party. The rest of us had to go to a shuttle and go up through this whole rigmarole shuttle experience. And so So. one of my friends had drive up privileges and just to show how strict it was, there was security guards all around the mansion to make sure people couldn't jump the wall and so on. Anyway, um, so I'm driving up and I, we head to the, you know, valet area at the, you had to go through this checkpoint at the bottom of this like hill. And the gentleman's like, I'm really sorry that, you know, even though Dana's on the list, she's not on drive up. And so she has to go through the shuttle process and you will have to drop her off and then come back and then you can drive up. So they literally wouldn't let you take anyone, even if they were on the list in the car with you at drive with drive up privileges. And Hugh used to give those to like the hairstylist working on his girlfriends and the playmates. He would give it to actors that were like a list that he respected, not just anyone. He did wasn't enough to be a list. You had to like, be someone that Hugh looked up to. You were not allowed to be even in a serious relationship. If you found that out, you were off. If you got fat and they found out you got fat, meaning you are, um, they take a photo of you sometimes randomly at the party and they, like when you're walking into the party at the gate, um, they would take you off the list on the pure basis that you weren't the right weight for what Hugh wanted at the party. I'm not kidding you. How did this exist? How? If there was a theme, they expected you to honor the theme. Um, what else? Um, if you didn't go to, I think it was like more than one party in a row, they would remove you from the list because it was like a disrespect to be on this very difficult list and then not attend the parties. And there was a lot of administration involved in inviting you to the parties and having you attend them. So he would like cut you off the list if you skipped too many of the parties or or didn't RSVP that you were coming. Now at this time, there wasn't a big cell phone issue because remember this is the like, I don't know, late 90s timeframe, right? So it wouldn't, you know, you didn't have that issue, but they definitely didn't want photography or any of those things happening without like Hugh doing it. Um, 
What were the parties like? They always, almost always, had us go to UCLA parking lot and you would like Uber to UCLA parking lot. And then you would, there'd be hundreds of people heading into this checkpoint area. And then they would check you to your photo to make sure that it was you and you'd need a photo ID to prove that it was you in the picture. And then they would let you um, you go through like a few other checkpoints. I don't remember all of them. And then you would get on the shuttle. And then once you were on the shuttle, you'd be shuttled up to the mansion through the gate. And there would be like wall to wall guys downstairs, big security dudes all around the perimeter of the estate, assuming that somebody might try to jump the gate or trespass. But they took it really seriously. Like it was like breaking into the White House, okay? Or maybe the White House is easier. So then once you were in the party, usually Hugh would have like a huge uh, piece of land tented, depending on the theme of the party. For Halloween, he would have decorations everywhere, all in theme. And it was, you know, really spooky because the mansion was kind of spooky anyway. And there would be... um Kind of like, I don't want to say animatronic. It wasn't that cheesy. It was just like really, really well done Halloween stuff everywhere. Theatrical, you know? And he always had the most amazing buffet. Think about like Carnival Cruise Line or, um, <laughs> what can I, like maybe let me give him a better one. Like the Wynn Hotel free buffet, like when you gamble a lot. That's what the food was like at the Playboy Mansion. It used to frustrate me because I'd be in this skimpy little uh, lingerie thing or costume. And I'd want to eat, but like I couldn't because I couldn't get bloated in my outfit. It would be horrific, especially with like the hottest women in the world around you at this party. And every movie star, every TV star you can imagine was there. And they were just mingling and debauchery, like drinking and drugs and just nuts, like Nobody's sober. Um, I mean, New Year's is a little tamer, okay? But the especially Midsummer's or the Halloween one, yeah, no, everybody was out of their mind. Out of their mind and acting like lunatics. Didn't matter, people there watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was you awesome. You wander around the mansion and go all over. So, like, I used to... I Halloween, I liked hanging out in the front hall because they always had, like, cool, weird... I don't know, Halloween-y stuff there. And then they had a, um, a bird sanctuary, which was fun. Um, there's a whole story about the bird sanctuary and the patron. Oh, my invites are in the patron because he used to send these like gorgeous invites and they were like pictures of him with the women, his girlfriends, or they were like art that he had done special for the party, really beautiful art deco style. He loved art deco. And... Um, so, you know, they were like art. So I kept a few of them. I'm like, someday I'll sell these, you know? <laughs> they had like a back guest house that was like a game room, but people would go back there and kind of make out and stuff. And there was like, but it was also a game room. So there was like fun stuff to do back there. We started getting bored in the main party. There was always a giant dance floor and everybody dancing. And there was a gym. It was like a weird gym. I feel like it was downstairs like a spiral staircase to this gym and I always would find huge people down there you know I think I saw Rod Stewart down there who else did I see down there um Mick Jagger anyway there was always shenanigans with the big celebrities down in the gym um <laughs> and there I'd just stumble down and they'd be doing stuff and I'd be like okay I'm gonna leave now but um and then um yeah what else? Everybody, you know, it was a real, you could totally people watch. People's costumes were amazing. The lingerie. Some of the women would come naked and they would have only body paint on them. But of course they had stunning bodies. So like nobody minded. And the paint that they had was so elaborate that, I mean, it just, it, it was, it was like art. Yeah. And, and Hugh Hefner, you know, he was a little bit more active in the parties um, in sort of when I first started going. And then after he got really old, he just would sit up on this, like, he'd have like a VIP area made for himself with like, on like a, I feel like it was on a podium or something like a, not a big podium, but like a short podium. And, you know, I'd go by and I'd say hi 
you know, kind of pay homage to the king type of thing. But like not that much interaction with Hugh. He stayed with his clique, you know, his group. Anyway, it was coveted. And when I got on the Midsummer Night Dream Party, I was really lucky because of, I think, my initial encounter with Hugh. Otherwise, I don't believe I would have gotten on that more exclusive list. I mean, it was like, I mean, it was clout. You'd say this in LA, you'd be like, oh, you're going to Midsummer's? I'm like, mm hmm. And it was like clout, instant. I know, really pathetic. <laughs> what is happening? But see, I suppose this is the kind of, um, you know, mind manipulation that, you know, works on people. You know, you hide things that would otherwise be not okay and completely uh, degrading and derogatory and awful and you put them in a shiny gold package with a bow and you forget that unfortunately what you might be involved in might not be the best and you're really the queen of nothing. When I was <laughs> listening to Heather McDonald's interview, um, I was surprised to hear Holly compare a recruiter for the girlfriends, not the parties, the girlfriends, as like a Galen Maxwell character. That was pretty shocking to me. I know Holly really regrets some of her time at the mansion as Hugh Hefner's girlfriend. I know she feels like there was grooming that happened to her and that she was taken advantage of and in a lot of ways. Um, and it wasn't a positive experience for her. She's commented on that several times now on shows and stuff, um, which is really hard. I feel so bad for her. Um, whether or not she, you know, at the time role played into whatever he wanted is one thing. But if now she has these kind of thoughts, I feel so bad for her. You know, uh, anyway, she, Holly says that sometime in 2004, there stopped being a recruiter in the girlfriend group, who, by the way, was treated better than everybody else, she says. And I was just like, who's the recruiter in the group? Which girl? Which girl? Because we would know her. I mean, you know. His, his girlfriends are highly documented. So I'm like curious to know who the recruiter was bringing in girls into Hugh's bed, you know, and um, anyway, they even did a role play and it was basically like the recruiter would say like, you can sit with Hugh, you can come behind the velvet robe, you can, you know, and then try to sway them to come back to the mansion and I guess partake in things and give them free booze and whatever else. So um, I know Heather's bringing up quaaludes with them and stuff like that. So it must have been a thing. It wasn't for me, but maybe it was for other people. I, I don't know. Maybe Hugh Hefner was into quaaludes. Anyway, they made it sound like the recruiter girl would kind of force them in a way to be intimate with Hugh Hefner if they went back to the Playboy Mansion after they all went out with him. You know, be, this is even before maybe you're a girlfriend, like you're actually living at the mansion she would say things like, you're not going to be invited back if you don't, you know, get in there, meaning to Hugh's bedroom, I guess. And they said it was all very short. So like only in there a minute or so. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose after seven women in one evening, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's seven minutes. That makes what sense. What also was shocking in Heather's interview, you guys have to go listen to it also because, you know, listen to her commercials and everything. She deserves it. Um, <laughs> so she gets paid. Go go listen to that. But what I was going to say is that um, it was shocking to me that Hugh didn't wear a condom, I guess. And so the girls would try to fight to be first so that it was less dirty. That's what was said. I cannot. Ew, ew, ew. Oh my gosh, these poor women. I guess a lot of the women wanted to be centerfolds and playboy and get the notoriety that came with that and maybe the money and perks too. I don't know. Um, no, I mean, that wasn't the only way to be a centerfold, but obviously maybe Hugh would favor them a little bit in his selection process. Um, I don't know, Holly shared a room with him. I didn't know that. I thought she had her own room. She shared a room with him. So how weird that would be, um, you know? Because I mean, he's her boyfriend, but he's he was just so difficult. I don't know. <laughs> She's really a champ. Anyway, I don't wanna to talk too much more about um, 
juicy scoop because I want you guys to go listen to Heather's episode. But that's, uh, yeah, that's it. Wow. Anyway, that's my Playboy story. That's how I got recruited by Hugh Hefner to attend his parties. Um, but uh, I never was his girlfriend. I never was asked to do that. I was never asked to go to the pool parties or um, any of that stuff. I talked to some of Hugh's friends. I wasn't probably very friendly. <laughs> I can be not friendly. People don't know that because I seem really friendly. But if I'm not into what you're saying, I can be a real bitch. So <laughs> I think they were like, mm, this isn't a good one to add to the group. Anyway, Holly and uh, Bridget uh, are doing, like I said, a new podcast. Go check it out. I don't remember the name of it. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Um, you can see all of it on Holly's uh, YouTube channel. You can learn all about it. All right, you guys, take care. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. You never know what's going to be on this channel, and you never know when it's going to disappear.